Today we'll launch VNS3 from Microsoft Azure. Today we'll start from a blank slate. This is Azure Free Trial Edition, just to demonstrate. A quick note on addressing before we start. Any VLAN CIDR and subnet that you create cannot overlap with the VNS3 Overlay Network subnet. First we'll configure the Azure environment before launching a VNS3 controller and then we'll configure VNS3 settings. So we'll start by creating a resource group. Click Add. And we'll name it. We've got a free trial. And we can pick the region. We'll go Central US. And click Create. New virtual network. Click Add. name it VNS3 network. For the address space, remember that our VLANs can never overlap with our VNS3. So for this example, we'll do 10.10.10.0 slash 24. And then our subnet will be 10.10.10.2.4. We'll add it to our resource group in Central US and click Create. Next, we'll add a new static IP. Here, click Public IP Address, click Add. We'll name it Static. Click Static. Make sure to add it to your resource group. Click Create. Next, we'll create a network security group. In Azure Network Security, they allow you to build access control lists or ACLs that are enforced at the Azure hypervisor firewall. These control access in and out of your Azure VMs. Network security groups can be associated with subnets or individual network interface cards or NICs that are running on your individual VM. So in this example we'll associate a VNS3 controller network security group with a VNS3 controller subnet that we just created. If you don't plan on segmenting out the VNS3 controllers into their own Azure network subnet, you can associate the network security group with a NIC running on the VNS3 controller. So now we'll click New Network Security Group. Add it to our resource group. Click Create. So click on Network Security Group to see the group we just created, and we'll click on the name in order to edit settings. Click on All Settings to get over to this right-hand tab, and here you'll be able to edit inbound and outbound security rules. We'll click on Inbound Rules first. <clears throat> By default there are no rules listed. Click on Default On. So your network security rules are processed in priority order. The lower the number, the higher the priority. Default inbound rules include a deny all traffic from anywhere to anywhere with the highest number, so the lowest priority. With that rule in place, we'll need to include specific rules to allow inbound traffic for your use case. And any traffic that doesn't match any specific allow rule will be denied. So in order to do basic VNS3 functionality, we'll need to add a few groups. Click Add. Name it VNS3 UI. Priority 100. And it will be Source Tag Internet. Protocol is TCP. Source Port Range is 8000, so TCP 8000. 
destination tag, virtual network, and port 8000 allow, OK. We'll go back and examine our outbound security rules. Outbound security rules doesn't list any rules by default, so we'll click default on to see the hidden rules. Default rules allow all outbound traffic. Cohesive Network recommends leaving the setting at least during implementation. You can always come back and lock down your traffic for your use case. Next, we'll create a storage account. Click Add. PNS3 Storage. And this is unique across Azure, so you might have to be a little bit creative here and make sure to assign it to your research resource group. Now we're ready to launch VNS3. You can either click new and search the marketplace. Here you'll see VNS3 VPN, this is our free edition, or VNS3 Net Lite. We'll click Lite. Here you'll see the requirements and setup guides. Make sure to deploy it in the Resource Manager. Next, we'll configure basics. We'll name it VNS3 demo. And here the Azure portal requires a username and SSH key or password. Regardless of your entry, Cohesive Networks does not provide shell access to VNS3 appliances. So this entry is required, but we will not use it again. So we'll name. Our username will be demo and choose whichever one. Lowercase, uppercase, number, and special character. Got a free trial. We'll select our existing resource group. Click OK. Next, we'll configure the size. As a rule of thumb, VNS3 should have at least one core and 1.5 gigabytes of memory. So, A1 Basic is a good place to start. Depending on your need, VNS3 can be run as a very large instance to provide more throughput for virtual networks or site-to-site -site connections. So for this example, we'll do A2 Basic. Click Select. Next, we'll configure settings. 
we have our storage account selected, our virtual network, our subnet, our public IP, and network security groups are selected. Click OK. Review the summary and click OK. Review again and click Buy. All right, and now our VNS3 appliance has launched. Here's our public IP address. We'll just copy this IP address. And to log in to VNS3, enter HTTPS colon slash slash your public IP colon 8000. You might see a warning, click proceed. And our default username and password is VNS Cubed. 